Did you see that Disney just came out with a new TV series called She-Hulk? Yeah, it's actually called She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. And I don't know about you, but I have been waiting my whole life to see the Incredible Hulk use its massive strength to argue court cases <laughs> in a court of law. It's a dream come true for me. I mean, wow, wow, really, what a great premise. It has me super pumped for the next show that's in the works, too. Iron Man. Car Salesman. Ooh, yes. That one's going to be good, too. You know, I, I remember watching the original Hulk TV series. And in this rendition of Hulk, you had Bruce Banner, who is a scientist exposed to gamma radiation. And this radiation changed his body so that anytime he would get mad, he'd turn into the Hulk and fight whatever was causing that anger to take place in him. Like the time that he was about to be beaten to death by a very realistic looking gorilla. How did they get that gorilla to act so well? Huh, that's crazy. You know, throughout my life, there have been times where I have felt like the Incredible Hulk for sure. You see, the Hulk would turn into the Hulk when he was pushed too far. And then when he got pushed so far, the transformation would happen. And then you better get out of his way if you know what is good for you. Well, I find that this has happened in my life more times than I would care to admit. It has actually happened enough times in my life that my family has a name for it. They uh, call it or refer to it as when my dam breaks. Yeah. Sometimes things or people just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, or in my case, adding more water, more water, more water, until finally the dam bursts. And when it bursts, everything pours out and anger flows freely in all directions, destroying anything in its path. My family has a name for it so that they can warn each other if they didn't know that that happened. Be careful. Your dad's dam just broke today. Yeah. Some people have other ways to describe it. Um, some people describe it as a runaway train that runs over everything and can't stop until it's out of steam. Yeah. Can you relate to that at all? Have you ever had a moment where you were just pushed too far and everybody just needed to stand back because this little teapot's about to blow his lid? Yeah. As a Christian, I know that this kind of anger isn't healthy for sure. I mean, the Bible's pretty clear that anger can be wrong and dangerous. James chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. You know what's interesting about that section of Scripture? It says that we are to be slow to become angry. It didn't say that we can't become angry. It says, make sure that you are slow to become angry. Why would it say that? Well, it says that because all anger isn't actually sinful anger. You know, Jesus in the Bible got angry multiple times. He got angry with the disciples when they turned away the little children. He got angry with the Pharisees multiple times over their false teachings. And one time, Jesus even became so angry that he made a whip, and he drove out the, the money changers, flipped their tables, and, and cleared the animals uh, out, of, uh, uh, out of the temple. So clearly, not all anger is sinful, or Jesus himself would have sinned. But anger a lot of times is sinful. So as Christians, then, what are we supposed to do with anger? Since sometimes anger can be okay and sometimes anger is, is sinful. I mean, what, what are you supposed to do? How, how, how are you supposed to wade through that? I know personally, I, I've found myself not stopping anger as much as I've found myself trying to hide anger. Have you, did you ever find yourself trying to hide anger before? I remember when I was younger, my dad used to say, I hope that when you grow up, your kids punish you by being loud and obnoxious and fight each other every single time you try to talk on the phone. Well, 
I don't know if he had an actual genie or not, but that wish became 100% true. When my kids were little, every single time I picked up the phone, they became awful. Spawn of Satan. I mean, seriously, they could be having a nice relaxing day, just laying on the couch, almost falling asleep watching TV. But when I picked up the phone, they would immediately turn into wild animals. I remember one time I went to call someone uh, from the church and I started to dial. And of course, my kids start to do their things. And I, I thought, oh, I'm not having this today. So I proceeded to yell at them and I ripped them up one side and right back down the other and when I paused in my yelling, I heard this little voice. Hello? Is someone there? <laughs> yes. I had forgotten to hang up the phone after I dialed the number. So I did what any self-respecting Christian would do. I immediately hung up the phone. Because I didn't want that person to know that it was their pastor that was angrily yelling at their children. And then about 15 seconds later, the phone rings. And uh, you could probably guess who it was on the other end. They had caller ID. And I hung my head down low and I said, Hello? And the person on the other line said, Pastor? You just tried to call me. Is everything okay over there? <laughs> uh, we don't want people to know that we struggle with anger. We don't want people to know that. So sometimes we just try to hide it. Uh, other Christians, they say, say, heck to try and hide this. If you're angry, flaunt it. Let everyone know about your anger. And with the creation of social media, they have now found an easy way to express it from a distance uh, without actually having to have a direct confrontation. It, it reminds me of this. This is what some Christians' anger have turned into. <laughs> yes, they are very angry when, when there's a screen between them and the other person. But when they're in person, then they love everybody. Uh, but when there's a screen, oh, you better stand back because you're going to get it. Yeah, to, to me, personally, that's even worse than hiding it. <laughs> so then what, what should we as Christians do? Because I don't think either one of those are a good option. Should we hide anger? Should we embrace anger? Should we pretend like we never get angry? Should we work to get rid of all of the anger in our lives? I mean, what should we do? This is one of those uh, subjects that you find yourself scratching your head over more than you actually spend any time doing anything about. And I think that we could really all use some insight on anger, don't you? So let me clear things up for a little bit. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to like it. Okay, I'm just going to tell you, you're not going to like it. Why wouldn't I like it? Well, because deep down, I, I think we're all hoping that I'm going to say the Bible is perfectly fine with you being angry. So keep up the good work. But that's, that's not the truth. I think it's safe to say that the overwhelming majority of the time that we feel angry, it's either sinful or very closely pushing the line. And when we look at the times that Jesus experienced anger in his life, do you know what they were always over? It was always over people messing with someone else's relationship with God. That's what you see when, when he gets angry. He was mad when the teachings of the Pharisee kept the common man from really understanding and knowing God. He was mad when the disciples kept the children from, from having a relationship with God. He was mad when the merchants turned God's house into a money-making scheme in the only part of the temple that Gentiles were allowed to come and worship God in. Yeah, when Jesus was angry, it was referred to as something as righteous indignation. Righteous indignation is the phrase that is used to describe anger when it is not sinful. 
It is the only lingering anger that we are supposed to have. But believe it or not, even righteous indignation can become sinful if you let it. And I say lingering uh, anger because anger is an emotion. And emotions, well, they're just a natural part of life. We are created to be emotional beings. Sometimes happiness will fill us, sometimes joy, sometimes love, sometimes fear, sometimes surprise, and sometimes anger. And we are never asked by God to be emotionless beings. Instead, God tells us how we're supposed to respond in light of those emotions. So when we are talking about righteous indignation, we're talking about the feeling of anger that's uh, okay to not only initially experience as an emotion, but also to linger on, pray about, and decide what your response should be to whatever caused this anger. So if you're trying to get a quick feel of whether or not something is righteous indignation or righteous anger, I want to give you a list of four things that help anger qualify as being righteous. Okay, so if you want to know if something is righteous anger, the, the anger that Jesus would have, the anger that is okay to have, it should really meet these four requirements. Requirement number one, righteous indignation is angry about sin. You see, every time the Bible speaks of anger in a positive manner, um, that anger is always in a response to sin. And you are permitted, and not just permitted, but you are encouraged, you are expected to be angry about sin. Because that is the right response to sin. If you learn of a child abuser, it's okay to be mad. If you learn about somebody being raped, it's okay to be angry. If you hear of a school shooting, you should be outraged. If the person in front of you is driving too slow for your liking, well, that's not really about sin, now is it? That's about you being annoyed. And, and if we're being honest, that's probably where most of our uh, anger originates from, really, isn't it? It's not about sin, it's about being annoyed. I just walked through the doors of this store. I'm gonna stand right here and plan my next move. Oh, I see that there's a car behind me in this parking lot. I'm just going to keep walking right in the middle of the driving area. Oops, I'm in the dentist's waiting room and I'm getting a phone call. Better put this one on speakerphone. Well, I'm all done with that now. Oh, it's my turn to order after spending over 20 minutes in line? Gosh, I have no idea. I'd better start the decision-making process right now. Hey kids. Why don't you run around and scream and climb all over the chairs while I wrap up this 45 minute phone call with your Uncle Rich. Great news. CVS didn't honor an expired coupon of mine, so I took it out on a service worker and held up the line. Okay guys, let's group up for a photo right in the middle of this walkway. Excuse me, do you have any cold, stinky, meaty sandwiches I can bring onto my crowded flight? Everybody stand a considerable distance away from the camera so as to take up as much real estate as possible. Let's grab about about nine or ten of these <laughs> yeah people are annoying they are very annoying but I'm sorry to tell you anger over annoyance it's not righteous indignation it has to be anger over sin and driving too slowly isn't a sin talking with your phone out in public on speakerphone is obnoxious but it's not a sin not cleaning up after yourself that's rude also not a sin. Righteous indignation is about sin. It's about sin. Got that? Okay, the second thing. Righteous indignation focuses on God's concerns. You got that? Number two. Righteous indignation focuses on God's concerns. What are the things that God is the most passionate about? What are the things that God is passionate against? See, those are the things that you are supposed to be passionate for and passionate against. So if you're trying to figure out if something is righteous in indignation, then you have to ask yourself, is this thing that I am fuming over something that God is fuming over along with me? Is he really fuming that your food is taking longer than it should in a restaurant? I don't think that's righteous indignation. Is he offended uh, deeply angry and offended that someone insulted your apple pie? Eh, probably not. 
you have to ask whether or not this is about your concerns or if it's about God's concerns. The third thing that you have to keep in mind, righteous indignation is expressed in godly ways. And this is one of those places that righteous indignation can become sinful, even if it started as something okay. Your response um, to this anger that you're feeling should generate something good. You see, the goal of anger is to see a sin and then help find a solution to it. So how you respond to this sin, how, how you respond to this anger that you're experiencing is kind of important. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard a cat that was so angry that it meowed until it partially blacked out? Yes, now that's some serious anger. Have you ever yelled until you partially blacked out? Oh, I need to sit down. Yeah. You see, righteous indignation is concerned with what a godly response to this sin should be so that it can produce a change. Violent protest is not a godly response, is not righteous indignation. Blowing up a place that you disagree with, not righteous indig indignation. Beating someone senseless, shouting hateful words, taking revenge, riding their bumper nice and tight, doing something out of spite. Yeah, none of those things are righteous. Your response to sin uh, many times it should be anger, but your response in the light of that anger is super important. And the last thing that you have to remember when trying to decide if something is righteous indignation or not is number four. Righteous indignation is almost always about someone else. You see, so much of our anger is because we've been insulted, because someone has forgotten us, because someone has ignored us. How dare they do that to me? Yeah. In not one single recorded example in Scripture did Jesus ever get angry over someone personally attacking him. Actually, quite the opposite many times. I mean, think about it. He washed Judas's feet the same night that Judas would betray him. His thoughts, his concern, his anger was always for someone else and never for himself. Now, with that said, um, I'm not trying to say that you can never be angry about something sinful that happens to you. However, I am saying that should be the exception, not the rule. Now, we've just begun to scratch the surface uh, of anger. And we've talked about the anger that you are encouraged to have from God, but there's also anger that we are definitely discouraged to have. And next week, we're going to get to continue our look into anger and look at why it is so dangerous and what steps we can be taking to make sure that we aren't allowing it to poison our lives. But that's enough for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Take care. God bless. Hope to see you soon.